Mr. Emin Hussainov is a Vice Rector for Strategy and Development at Azerbaijan Diplomatic Academy. Mr. Hussainov is a professional economist, having been involved in economic policy making in Azerbaijan for over 14 years. Mr. Hussainov started his professional career at international organizations such as the United Nations, the World Bank, and the International Monetary Fund. For September 2005, he joined the Central Bank of Azerbaijan to head the newly established research department. In 2010, a new the Center for Research and Development was established on the basis of the research department within the Central Bank of Azerbaijan and Mr. Hussainov was appointed a director of the Central while simultaneously being promoted to a position of executive director of the Central Bank of Azerbaijan. Currently, Mr. Emin Hussainov is a vice director on strategy and development of Azerbaijan Diplomatic Academy. Mr. Hussainov holds two master degrees, one in economics from Florida State University and another one in public administration from Harvard Kennedy School. While a student at the Harvard Kennedy School, he was also elected and served as a finance vice president of the Kennedy School student government. ADA is the uh, first university in Azerbaijan that has fully English language education. So we teach only in English, that's one. Secondly, this um, is a university which has an honor code, which is very important for academic honesty and integrity. So our students do not cheat. It's very transparent. Education is um, um, uh, based on the quality standards. Um, so we try to instill um, global leadership in our students. And the third advantage is that we don't only provide knowledge, we also provide uh, uh, awareness about values, about citizenship. So it's important to be a good citizen, socially responsible citizen. So these are the uh, advantages of ADA, studying at ADA. Um, I, uh, of course, uh, can go on and on, but in very brief, these are the advantages. What are the ADS strengths and weaknesses? Okay. Well, the major strengths, major strengths is the the fact that we have a great learning environment. So we have this beautiful campus, so it it does provide for a good learning environment. <coughs> so that's a major strength that many universities don't have. Uh, second uh, advantage is information technologies. So not only that uh, we have good campus, nice buildings and all that, but we also have good information technologies. So it's, you know, we have uh, smart boards, uh, smart campus, green campus, green technology. We have, um, you know, full um, campus. Uh, the campus is, is e uh, equipped with uh, high-speed Wi-Fi uh, throughout the campus. So it's uh, um, high level. And the, uh, another advantage is that we have uh, diversity here. You now we have a lot of uh, international students. Uh, we have 48 students from 27 countries. So uh, and the number is going to increase every year. And it's not only from one specific country. It's from a lot of countries. So it's good to have this diverse uh, environment. Um, another strength is that uh, ADA has um, access to uh, most of the digital resources, library resources. So we have one of the uh, biggest, uh, largest libraries in the region here at ADA, an English language library. So uh, weaknesses, in terms of the weakness, um, we're still small, we're new, we lack um, uh, <coughs> extensive uh, uh, number of faculty. We don't have um, our faculty is still in small numbers, so we are going to increase slowly. But uh <coughs> another weakness is that we uh, uh, still have uh, we're extending our network of international partnership. But we're not there yet. We don't have uh, extensive 
partnership agreements yet. Uh, so we, because we're new, we're just a young institution. Um, I think uh, another another possible uh, weakness would be that we have not yet reached the level of uh, financial sustainability that we could finance our operations by our own. So we still depend on uh, government support. We depend on support from business community, from uh, different. Uh, international uh, partnerships, projects. So we haven't reached this level of self-sustainability to basically maintain our operations. So these are the three main, main weaknesses. And what are your short-term and long-term strategy? Well, our <coughs> short-term strategy is to uh, finalize the formation of the uh, university. So we we were established as a training institution. Um, that uh, was uh, aimed to uh, prepare junior diplomats for our foreign service in 2006. But then we realized we, we can be a university. So uh, that process has started and it's still ongoing. But we have to finalize that process. Um, in the next five years, we believe we want to finalize that process. So we will be... Uh, um, we will establish all the schools that we want, and um, the schools of business and schools of uh, school of public and international affairs. Uh, we want to uh, also finalize the establishment of school of education and languages, and school of IT and engineering. So four schools, a compact university. Um, will probably have a small number of students but uh, much more focus on the quality. So we don't want to be another big university or state university in Azerbaijan. We want to be small, but deeper into knowledge, deeper into quality, uh, so that it would be recognized for this quality. So that's our short term, I mean, the next uh, five year strategy. But uh, in terms of the long term strategy, we want to be a world class university. We think as every citizen has a right to have a world-class university in Azerbaijan. Um, as every citizen is entitled to that. It, he or she does not have to go to uh, Europe or North America or uh, to Asia to get the world-class education. He or she can stay here in Azerbaijan, in Baku, and get the world-class education. And Azerbaijan uh, has the potential to be known to the world by its high-level world-class education. Let me just pick up. What does the world-class university mean? So, um, does it mean we want to be a Harvard or Stanford? Um, yeah, we would like to be, but um, I don't think we mean that. Uh, I don't think it's possible. Um, to achieve in 10 years, or even 20 years. I think the institutions like Harvard and Stanford and Yale and, and uh, Wharton, um, these institutions, they have established their reputation during many years. So it's not, it's not just, uh, uh, it's not that easy. But I think we can get to a second tier level um, uh, very quickly. Um, so all we need to do is to get um, an international accreditation, international recognition for our programs. So, uh, and that is possible. And if we can do that, then we can become um, as competitive as many universities, um, you know, top 50 universities in, in the world. So and that's, I think, it's a very good result. <coughs> Can you describe your students, especially international students? Why should international students select ADA? Well, uh, basically, if I was a, if I were an international student, and this is this is uh, this is w what happens, uh, you know, in our interviews, this becomes clear. Uh, this is what uh, our international students use as uh, the argument. <coughs> you know what? What would be, what would be my interest in coming to ADA? Well, to start with, um, 
not many people know what ADA is, even in Azerbaijan, right? So let alone uh, in foreign country, who would know what ADA is? I mean, the, it's kind of difficult to make a decision to leave uh, your country to go somewhere um, called Azerbaijan and then study at ADA. So <clears throat> nevertheless, we do have a lot of interest in ADA from international students. And the reason is, I think, not only not only ADA itself, but um, I think this uh, the fourth pillar of our mission uh, that we call striving location. You know, our mission is based on four pillars, and and one pillar is global leadership, another one is innovative education, the third one is social uh, social responsible citizenship. And then the fourth pillar is thriving location. And by thriving location, we mean that all of the three previous mission pillars, they all happen in thriving location. And this thriving location is Azerbaijan, Baku, and ADA. So all three of them are thriving. Azerbaijan is thriving because Azerbaijan is becoming stronger and stronger day by day as a sovereign country, as an uh, independent country, uh, with its economy growing. Uh, Baku has become a center of um, uh, intercultural or multicultural uh, tolerance and uh, acceptance, basically. So we have uh, a lot of cultural sports events happening uh, in Baku, so it's thriving too. And ADA is a thriving location, as it's clear from our campus. So um, this location will be thriving further. So I think people come here because they want to be part of this. They want, this is an interesting region. Azerbaijan is, uh, is you know, in South Caucasus, but South Caucasus as it is, very interesting, you know, it can, it can, uh, you can go to Russia from here, you can go to uh, Europe, you can go to Turkey, you can go to Iran or Greater Middle East, you know, so it's very, it's like a, a lot of things happening in our region. But you see a lot of instability. You see instability in Iran, you see instability in Syria, uh, in Turkey, you see a lot of problems in Russia. Uh, and Eastern Europe now in Ukraine, uh, in in Western Europe in terms of economic crisis and all that. And now, in in all this area, Azerbaijan is the only country that has a very stable political and economic environment. So, you know, it's and and being close to everywhere. So, if you are a, an academia, if you are a student you know, who wants to do research on on the region. This is the best place. This is as close as you can get to all these countries. So they are attracted to the environment. They're attracted to the culture. They're attracted to uh, the capacity. So, uh, you know, they come because they want to be, uh, to understand what it is like to live in a country like Azerbaijan. We used to, uh, I asked one of our students uh, who is, uh, who's graduated now from the United States. So he came to Azerbaijan to study in our master program, Jim. So I asked him, Jimmy, uh, why did you come to Azerbaijan to study international relations? I mean, you have so many universities in the United States. He said, you know, um, yeah, he, but we, we, I would never understand what it's like to live in a developing country. So now here, I get the same caliber, same quality of education, but I also live in the country. So this is like, this is, I, and now I understand what is developing like, what is development is like. So that's a completely different experience. So it's much more interesting to study uh, development and international relations living in that environment than uh, living in, uh, you know, in the United States or uh, advanced uh, country where everything is okay. How we can make ADA a world class university? 
Well, I think uh, uh, it's not easy, um, but I think it's possible. Uh, to start with, we need to make sure um, we live up to our uh, expectations of um, the faculty and and uh, uh, students. Um, you know, we have to keep our reputation at high level. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, we need to make sure our students are graduating with competences required in the economy. Make sure our students uh, get good job offers, uh, land, uh, land good jobs, um, so they're well paid. Uh, we want to make sure uh, we have uh, more accomplished scholars in terms of in the, you know, among our faculty. Um, you know, we want to make sure we have very close linkages with the business community um, so that uh, we serve interests of the business community um, so that, you know, we have this reciprocal uh, relationships, mutually beneficial relationships. <coughs> we have to make sure we have a uh, good network of uh, internationally, a good network of partner institutions, partner universities where we do a lot of student exchanges um, and dual degree programs. So <coughs> at the end of the day, uh, we need to make sure we are accredited. We receive an international accreditation, which is very important nowadays. You know, if uh, people, you know, uh, it's special for international students, you know, um, they actually, m many international students, many and many international students nowadays they look for uh, international accreditation before deciding whether they should come to Azerbaijan or, or go to, say, UK. Especially, uh, I must say, like China. You know, it's very difficult to attract Chinese students to any country. They're really um, interested in um, seeing what, what they're going to get as a result. So they're uh, looking for uh, pursuing their education in accredited institutions. So accreditation is very important. Now this year we have uh, the first Japanese student. So we're very excited about having a Japanese student. We have students from Vietnam. Uh, we have students from, um, uh, traditional students from Pakistan, <coughs> um, from Argentina, from um, Mexico. So, um, you know, basically, you know, this this is this is how we can become a world class university if we do everything right, and that takes time, it takes effort, I think that takes dedication, hard work, um, and people do that uh, not because they receive salaries here. Uh, people do that because they want to do that. So we have a very good team here, uh, headed by our uh, esteemed director, uh, who is a man of, uh, man of honor, man of principle, uh, a very intellectual person, an example, a role model for all of us. Uh, so we really take a lot of pride in having him as our rector. And we try to live up to his expectations. So. Um, you know, we actually don't look at watch when it's time to go home. Uh, you know, it's, I don't remember when it was the uh, last time I, uh, you know, did not take computer home and could stay away from computer and not check my emails at 3 a.m. in the morning. Not because I'm crazy, but probably because I care. And all of us are like this here. So we really dedicated to the work we're doing. We know this is good for Azerbaijan, most importantly. So we're doing this for the country. And uh, I think that is possible. So sooner or later we'll do that. And finally, I want to ask another question. What is the role of ADA in Azerbaijan economy, society, and politics? I think the biggest role ADA can play um, through uh, of you know four dimensions of the pillars that I mentioned earlier. First of all, uh, ADA prepares different kind of graduates. So it's not just the graduate that we prepare. 
It's not just a, a regular graduate from a regular university. Um, full of knowledge, you know, um, some professional of some certain area. But that's not that's not uh, really what we're after. You know, you can be a great, great knowledgeable person, but if you lack uh, leadership, then uh, you will not be able to um, serve your cause, serve your purpose. So we actually prepare leaders for our society. Uh, not only for our society, but for globally, uh, for all the countries represented here, but mostly for our society. We believe, uh, you know, our society needs good leaders, strong leaders. So we consider ourselves as a, a school of leadership for our society. People who graduate from ADA, they can go and they can fight for their cause. They can mobilize people and they can, um, you know, stand for their principles and basically um, get to that ideal state they always dreamed about. So, um, so this they they can be good leaders. Secondly, we prepare. We uh, we can be uh, useful for our society because uh, we do innovative uh, education. So we have a kind of innovative uh, way of teaching, very interactively. Um, you know, involving students in different projects, um, using different resources. So we can uh, we can actually help the economy by preparing not only leaders but also creative people. So uh, our our graduates can uh, be creative in finding solutions to uh, very complicated problems because that's how we teach them. So we teach them to be creative and to have critical thinking. So that's another way where we can be helpful. We can also be helpful in terms of you know, preparing socially responsible citizens. I think uh, this is something that no other institution really um, uh, focuses on. So we try to prepare uh, not just experts, not just technocrats, but people who can really understand why, uh, what is the meaning what is the meaning? Why are they, uh, uh, you know, uh, living and working in Azerbaijan or in their countries? You know, what is the bigger cause, bigger social cause that they can be part of? Uh, what is their role? How can they act responsibly uh, so that they can cultivate this culture? Uh, in other members of the society. So we believe that it is important for a person to care for others. It's important to help others. It's important to help disabled, disadvantaged, elderly, those who are deprived, those who suffer from hunger and poverty. It's important to be socially responsible, to care for the environment, to care for your neighbor, you know. Be, do good to people. So, uh, and we try to kind of uh, raise awareness um, among our students that it's as important as uh, giving technical knowledge, hard knowledge. It's as important as becoming a good human being as uh, it is to become a good expert. So, wisdom is a combination of knowledge and a character. So only, you know, as as um, uh, Martin Luther King uh, used to say, the true goal of education is um, not just to provide <coughs> uh, education, but um, to uh, uh, provide a critical, critical uh, thinking. So if you have that, then that means you can be a great person, you can be a great leader. So uh, that's, I think, that's how we can be helpful to our society. Thank you for responding to our question. Thank you for uh, having me as your 
uh, into V and uh, for your guest and I hope uh, I wish you a success in your project and hope uh, we'll continue our cooperation in some way in future.